So Malcolm, Malcolm McKee is um, Director of Stewardship at the Ministry for the Environment, previously been with both the tre both Treasury and Ministry of Social Development, and he's going to tell us about the new work from Statistics and MFE, uh, and also uh, in relation to that work is in relation to the first independent consolidated uh, report on the environment for New Zealand, and maybe give us a little bit of an international policy perspective on ecosystem changes. Malcolm. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you, Mark, for that uh, kind of introduction. Um, a special thanks first to uh, Penny for inviting me here today. We're, we're very lucky to have Penny on our advisory board uh, for this work, and she contributes a great deal, and we, we greatly appreciate her input, and uh, very appreciate the opportunity to, to come out, get out of Wellington for a day, and to promote this work. We're trying to promote it as, as much as, as we can. What, what I'm presenting today, well firstly actually, um, and Mark's alluded to it, I did want to um, just allude to my silent partner here, which is the Stats New Zealand logo. Um, I would have loved Stats New Zealand to be here with me today, and you'll see why in my presentation they br bring such a strong component to this work. Look, what I'm presenting to you today is something that we think will be a bit of a game changer on how environmental information is reported assessed and debated in New Zealand. I'm conscious I only have 10 minutes. I'm very grateful for the 10 minutes. Actually, I'm very impressed by the efficiency of this meeting. Um, my, my objective is to really just whet your appetite um, of this work so that uh, you, can, you can approach me in, over the drinks and ask me plenty of questions. I've got plenty of business cards, so please take those and happy to follow up with other questions. So firstly, to explain uh, where we're going, I think it's easier to take a step backwards first. Um, look, environmental reporting isn't brand new to the Ministry. We've um, done two big State of the Environment reports in the past, uh, 1997 and 2007 was our, our last major one. But since then, the, the Government has moved to um, legislate for and to provide an independent uh, legislative basis to reporting. Now, you, you do have to take your head off to the government for doing this um, because this is not necessarily going to be overly helpful to them. Um, this is actually about, a, in my view, a, a foundation democracy uh, piece of legislation and provides an arm's length from the government and we like to think of ourselves as, as replicating uh, what the Treasury do in terms of economic reporting at arm's length um, to us and Statistics New Zealand doing independent environmental reporting, holding um, governments to account over a longer period of time. Uh, so we have a bill going through the House, um, well, about to go into the House. In fact, I had to miss the last select committee this morning to come up here. But as I arrived, I got a, an email to say that uh, that had gone well. Uh, it, it will be back in the House next week and should be passed uh, within a month or so. What I would say, however, is that we have operationalised this already. Um, so at the end here is um, our 2014 Air Domain Report. Um, and we will uh, produce a full synthesis report um, by the middle of this year. So what is the, the purpose of this uh, new environmental reporting approach? Um, a lot of words on this slide, but I think this sums it up. So if we start um, top left, uh, regular. So the timing is going to be set in legislation. Um, it doesn't matter about the political cycle. It doesn't matter whether we need to report the day before an election. If, we, um, if it's in the schedule, um, as per the legislation, it needs to be reported. Uh, independent. So these will be produced by the Secretary for the Environment, my, my boss, and the government statistician jointly. Um, these roles are set out in legislation, and they are being produced under Tier 1 um, principle and protocols through Stats New Zealand. What that literally means, I guess from a minister's perspective, is that they only get um, briefed on the information 45 minutes before it's released uh, to the whole of New Zealand, in the same way that GDP statistics, uh, CPI statistics are um, announced as well. Uh, fair and accurate. So Stats New Zealand bring their best practice uh, skills to the table. I can, I, tell, I can tell you now they're very tough. 
Um, they bring a very rigorous process that we're needing to follow, but that's very important so that we can get that kind of fair and accurate um, stamp. Uh, certainty. Um, areas, the areas are going to be set out in legislation. Topics will be uh, determined by a set of regulations. But the government statistician then retains um, an ability to, to, to determine the statistics that are going to be uh, reported. Trusted by the public. So I very strategically placed that above uh, the Stats New Zealand logo because that for me is about the Stats New Zealand brand. So uh, Felicity talked before about uh, you know Doc being called all sorts of uh, silly names in the past. Um, we are potentially face that a little bit ourselves. So no longer will anyone be able to say, oh, there's the Ministry for the Environment, you know, that kind of greeny-tinged ministry in Wellington, you know, pushing a certain uh, line. Uh, no. Um, we will now do this jointly with Stats New Zealand, add that statistical robustness required to get um, the right brand so that it can be trusted by the public. Um, further, uh, the legislation actually provides for the Parliamentary Commissioner for the Environment to have full audit um, abilities on this piece of work. Um, so uh, her role, um, Dr Jan Wright, um, is very wide ranging in the legislation um, and I can tell you now, having done the Air Domain Report, they send in the troops, they audit our, our procedures very thoroughly, and they make um, you know, any commentary they like on our, our processes, our practices, our reporting, and also um, policy implications. But ultimately, we're working towards that middle box. What we're trying to do is move the public conversation away from debating the data towards addressing environmental issues. So let me cover the, the approach itself. Um, quite different to the past. So in the past, we just did the middle bit, just the state. Um, now we're telling a far more comprehensive story. Now in terms of the international comparison, I would like to say, I would love to say that we are, we are setting the world alight um, with this regime. I can tell you, unfortunately, we're not. Um, we're actually playing catch up. Um, this is also um, rings true with Felicity's presentation that we are behind the eight ball on this. So uh, many OECD countries already have this sort of pressure state impact model in operation or variants uh, thereof. Um, and we are literally uh, playing catch up. So what does this do? Well, the state is your kind of traditional, you know, what is the condition of the environment? The pressure uh, component asks, well, why is it in that condition? And the impact component says, what does this mean for economic, cultural, recreational, public health reasons? So a quick, quick work example, in the, think about the freshwater area. In the past, we would have just commented on a, a set of water quality indicators. Uh, well, now we will tell a more comprehensive story about um, some of the pressures, the point source emissions, and the impacts, you know, population health effects, um, economic costs and benefits, and recreational components. <coughs> to us, this approach owns up to the fact that society lives in the environment and very legitimately modifies it for economic, social, cultural, recreational reasons. Uh, you only need to look outside and look at the way we've modified this environment here. I flew here from, from uh, Wellington today and looked out of the plane and looked at the way the environment had changed. I imagine myself flying that same path, perhaps in 1700. Imagine what the environment would look like. But no, we've come here, we've settled this country and we've modified it. Um, and we've done so for very good reasons. And um, this approach attempts to tell that more holistic story. So the timetable, we get put, uh, well the legislation puts us on a very strict uh, three year reporting cycle. So we've divided the environment up into five domains. Um, uh, many ways you could have cut this, but these are the ones we came up with. Uh, freshwater, marine, atmosphere and climate, air and land. They will be reported through a, what we're calling a domain report, so they are environment domains every six months. 
and then a full synthesis report that brings this all together, um, produced every uh, three years. Um, I mentioned before the synthesis report we're going to do um, uh, in mid this year, and and then we hope to uh, produce our first uh, domain report, being fresh water, in April 16. We we it's going to take us a little while, but we just need to get the, our regulations passed um, in between time. So why is this relevant uh, to business? Um, well, ultimately. Uh, we believe the business component will be much better known. So there will be a better understanding of the pressures business is having on the state and the environment. There will also be a better understanding of the impact on the economy, both positive and negative, from business utilising those natural resources. What we are attempting to do is uh, mature the debate. Um, we believe the worst environmental debates uh, you can have in a society are ones that are based on poor information, uh, based on misleading information or incomplete information, or involve high degrees of emotion, value judgments or preconceived ideas. What we're trying to do is get the debate to be more rational and informed, which is something that we think then business can participate in more. Great. That all sounds uh, really good and perfect. I want to make uh, a number of disclaimers on this. Firstly, this is going to take some time to get right. Um, my, my manager and I sit around and we, we kind of wave our arms in the air and we think of this as being a seven to ten year project or something like this. It, it's fair to say that data investment in this area has been very poor. We've talked a lot today about New Zealand being the laggards of the world in terms of environmental information. Um, take, for instance, just water information. Um, our set of water indicators at the moment are based on uh, uh, sites selected by regional councils where they know they've got particular problems, so therefore our national picture looks um, unbiasedly bad. Um, we need to tell a national picture, so we need to invest more in that data. Um, I can tell you now that not all the topics we'd like to report will be populated to start with. And I can tell you now that we are going to need to invest heavily in some new methodologies. Um, the economic, the environment economic interface methodologies and impact area, I think are undercooked and will need quite a bit of investment. And certainly the cultural components as well, bringing in the the um, Mataranga Māori uh, components and marrying that up to, with Western science is going to be a challenge. Um, so I would ask you, when you do re read our report in mid-year, to uh, do cut us a little bit of slack. Um, we're very confident it will be a good start, but we're very confident too that um, we're going to need quite a bit of time to improve it, and I'm very keen at that point to be engaging with as many people in the, uh, around the New Zealand as we can about how we do improve this over time. Thank you.